Now to further discuss this, I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by Mr. Lawrence Brom. He's the founding director of the Himalayan Consensus and co-author of new megatrend, One Belt, One Road, and the Remaking of Globalization. Welcome to our program, Mr. Thanks. Brom. It's great to be back on your program. So let's talk the Conference of Dialogue of Asian Civilizations is the first of its kind. What kind of values does it hold? What's the essence? I think what's happening here is the emergence of a fresh paradigm of global values built on the foundations of very ancient civilizations. You know, in the past, the what we call universal values has been more or less, you know, programmed by the United States and some former colonial, you know, countries of Europe that were setting the agenda and they don't represent the whole world. And now we're looking at Asia, which is really the bulk of the global population, and civilizations that have a very different way of looking at things, where in the West it's about duality, right, wrong, good, bad, winners and losers. In Asia, it's about non-duality. It's about harmony. It's about being able to work together in a kind of syncretic way and not necessarily exposing differences but trying to find ways and solutions. This responds, of course, in the economics. The traditional Western approach that's been thrown out is you're either a capitalist economy or a socialist. You're you know, either a one-party system or a democracy, and these things don't go together. But in Asia, the view is very different. I mean, it's pragmatic. You can have market solutions and planning, using them as tools in a very you know, neutral way without having to adopt ideology. It also comes down to governance. In the West, it's about zero-sum game. One party wins and the other loses, and the policies will shift very dramatically. Mm -hmm. In Asia, regardless of its, whether it's a one-party system like China or Vietnam or a parliamentary system like India or Japan or Singapore, it's about building consensus. It's a constant process of consensus building, and that's what this whole conference is all about. And if we look at the world today, a lot of the problems uh, that exist in the world today, uh, be it religious, be it uh, political, be it economic, are to some extent a result of cultural uh, clashes or clash of civilizations. So what kind of role do you think the integration of different civilizations will play in solving tensions like the world trade we are seeing today? Well, well first of all, I think we have to understand that you know, from the opening reform of China, there was an enormous push to want to join the sort of the club of elite nations, you know, America, Europe, uh, formerly the G7, they were talking about G20 and, and so on. But in many ways, uh, despite its entry into WTO, China and many other Asian countries have been rejected from that club. And so now you see a very volatile world situation with populism in some countries, even bordering on fascism. And you see you know, the right uh, you know, expressing a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, should we say, conflict emerging. And I think this is very different from the Asian approach. The Asian approach is even if there is conflict, let's try to avoid the conflict. Let's not put these things on the table. Let's try and find commonalities. Let's find points to work with. And there's a kind of a Tai Chi approach to politics in Asia and to economics, which is very different from the West. And now with the trade war quickly becoming a cold war, I think many Asian nations are saying, look, this is a time for us to sit back and to come together mm -hmm. and have our own value paradigm. And with that value paradigm, to be able to work with our economics in a way that is not ideological, but it's practical, yeah. and evolve it in the current changing world situation. Mm -hmm. And key to this thing is also environment. You have big movement right now coming from China and other countries to shift away from fossil fuels toward clean energy. And you have the opposite taking place in the United States under the Trump administration, where there's a massive push toward promoting fossil fuels. Yeah. And I think this, of course, is about the future of not just Asia and the West, but the whole planet. Wow, thank you so much, Lawrence Braun, for your insights on this. Appreciate it.